want to bring in former Democratic Governor of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick. He is also co-chair of American Bridge 21st Century and former U.S. Assistant Attorney General for the Civil Rights uh, Division. Governor, thanks for joining us. Um, Good to we meet appreciate you, Desmond. it. Thank you. Talk to me about the convergence of today's events. As we take a look at what's happening in the state of Arizona right now, you have a fight for voting rights. You have Dr. King's uh, birthday. You also have the first of, I'm sure, many uh, former President Trump rallies happening in the same state. Hmm. Uh, yes, indeed. Quite a, uh, quite a juxtaposition. You know, we, we, we are sooner or later going to have to decide whether we believe in a participatory democracy, uh, whether we whether we believe citizens should get the right uh, conveniently to cast a vote and determine their own political and civic destiny, or whether we're going to have partisans rig the vote by uh, excluding uh, or obstructing some citizens or just throwing out outcomes that they don't like. And both of those views are represented in the examples you talked about uh, today. We need these reforms because of the excesses in some 19 states and counting right now in the wake of the 2020 election that is making it harder, less convenient, uh, less secure, and less uh, certain in terms of the outcomes uh, to cast a vote in this country, and that is fundamentally anti-democratic. I want to read um, for our viewers part of your op-ed that you wrote in uh, the Boston Globe earlier this week. Uh, basically talking about the sacred nature of voting. And you say this, making it easy to vote and to have that vote count is about giving everybody a chance to participate in their own civic destiny. That was a radical idea in the 1770s when the founders came up with it. But it was the right way and the only way to make freedom possible. And it still is. Talk to me about the tie between voting and freedom in this country and why it is so integral to get this voting rights legislation across the finish line? You know, we have, we have what we describe as a representative government, or what's supposed to be, meaning each of us has an opportunity to choose the people who speak for us, who cast votes for us, who hear from us in our petitions, uh, in, our, uh, in our Congress, in our state houses, uh, in our city halls uh, and town halls. That was a radical idea when the founders put it into place um, at the start of our republic. Um, before then, it was a few powerful people, often one powerful family, um, that simply decided what uh, was going to happen in the life of everybody else. Um, so we've gotten more than accustomed to this idea of a participatory uh, democracy, but we've been perfecting it from the beginning, right? At the beginning, it was just rich white landowners, and mm. then it was uh, non-rich or not so rich white landowners. And then ultimately it was former slaves and ultimately uh, 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 women, um, uh, naturalized immigrants, uh, young people who were old enough when I was uh, coming up to join the military but not to vote. And so we extended the vote to 18-year-olds. Uh, to All of this has been about honoring this idea of a participatory democracy. And the notion, if I may say, Yasmin, yeah. That we're arguing about a procedural rule, the filibuster, that appears nowhere in the Constitution, that is completely antithetical to these ideals of participatory democracy, that was invented in the 1930s for the purpose of making it harder to pass civil rights laws, would now be defended as some institutional, uh, um, you know, kind of... Um, uh, 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 rubric that can't be uh, can't be undone, can't be reconsidered when in fact it is undone and reconsidered all the time for the budgets, for uh, the the uh, debt ceiling just recently, I think for the defense bill, all the time when the Senate wants to, they look the other way from this rule so they can get to the merits. And the question here is whether they will even get to debate the merits without making a change in the filibuster rule. And you juxtapose your, your op-ed to that of former Vice President uh, Mike Pence and his op-ed in the Washington Post um, issued on Friday justifying the voter restrictions put in place by states I like Texas that. who said in the years since the fateful day, states across the country have enacted measures to try to restore confidence in the integrity of our elections while ensuring access to voting for every American uh, what he does not address in this op-ed is that confidence should not have been lost in these elections since it was the freest and fairest election that we have had in this nation's 
um, history in spite of the fact that he did call out those that attacked the Capitol Indeed. on well, January you're quoting, 6th, you're which quoting was, his in fact, own ironic administration. of this op-ed. <laughs> yes, certainly I am. You, you are For quoting his own administration saying it was the freest and fairest uh, election uh, yeah. in a long, long while. Yeah. Former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick. Patrick, thank you so much. Great to talk to you this afternoon. We appreciate it. Coming up, by the way, at 4 p.m., Arizona Secretary of State and candidate for governor Katie Hobbs weighs in on the